Sapphire Rapids, um, the next generation, in, you know, Intel uh, chips for data center, Pat, um, announced live, came out. You wrote a great piece on Forbes. Um, this one's yours, so I'll let you go first, but a uh, big moment for Intel. Yeah, big moment for Intel, uh, a couple of years late, and, and I, you know, we've, we've both had the the opportunity to talk to Pat Gelsinger. And I just had to have a five minute conversation with Pat Gelsinger to understand, I don't know why this is late. Intel took on a lot, right? Typically what you don't do in the same generation is you don't do the same, you don't, you don't change the node and you don't radically change the design. Intel did, did both of those, right? They radically changed the design from a monolithic design uh, to one that was distributed. That's the first thing that, that that they did, and they also made one of the biggest node changes uh, that, that that was out there. But but the reason this was was late uh, was because the confluence of that, but primarily they had to do a lot of backporting from what they thought they were going to be on more like an Intel five than an Intel and an Intel seven. But big takeaways uh, for me. Um, were, uh, first of all, it, it's here. This has been shipping uh, for months. It might be late, but, but it's already here. It's all about acceleration uh, performance. I think Intel outlined that they had eight different accelerated accelerator engines. And these are pieces of code that don't necessarily, that don't run on the CPU, they run on these accelerators. Just like we've, uh, fall in love with GPUs that do acceleration. So um, these are anywhere from, you know, accelerating data streaming to AI, to analytics, to load balancing, to VRAN, um, quick assist uh, for encryption and decryption, crypto acceleration. So a lot of these different subcomponents that, that, that come together, not just for AI that let's say an NVIDIA does, but for a lot of other type of, of capabilities. The, um, I think the second um, big, big picture here is that it's not only all about acceleration, but it's not at all about the CPU. Intel in their announcement did not talk about the CPU a single time, which is very different from let's say what Ampere or what AMD has 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 been talking about and it's it, and it's a positioning move and i think the degree of success daniel is going to come down to a the software uh that could take advantage of that acceleration customers wanting to use the software that uses those optimization optimizations and a heck of a lot of of sales and marketing they're not going to do this on raw cpu performance they're not going to do this on cost, uh, so they're headed, which, which I think is a very valid, uh, a very valid strategy. Now, they had the who's who <clears throat> show up uh, on their stage, which is an indication of the type of support they're getting. Heck, who was the first person, non-Intel person, who was on stay on their virtual stage? Our year one six five summit keynote speaker. Uh, Michael S. Dell, uh, you had Antonio Neri, you had YY from Lenovo, you had uh, you had Jensen, hey, Dave Brown from AWS, another 6.5 uh, guest, Arvind Krishna uh, was on there. And, you know, so really- I think they've all been 6.5 guests. They have, except for yeah, those were now except maybe well, not Y Y Y Y is not, but but the other the other four yes, Ragu was there from 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 VMware. So Intel rolled out the the digital red carpet, and you know now I think that's really a plus, but a word of caution. I wouldn't directly relate what maybe what people are saying behind the scenes all the time to the big uh, veeps that, that that go on stage, but they do know that that Intel is going to be a continue to be a major force. They have the dominant market share in server parts today, uh, between eighty and seventy percent, depending on on who uh, you count. And guess what? 
the next generation, they have to no longer apologize for what node they're on. I believe Intel is going to be at a, uh, first of all, they're going to be on their second generation of distributed architecture, and they're going to be on a, a much more competitive node, which means the amount of area they can devote to certain subsystems uh, will go up um, and keep the chip the same size. So I'm optimistic. We'll see. Yeah, so you hit it on the head. I mean, the by bygones be bygones. Intel was going to be late. Nobody's surprised by this. That's um, right. It's here. The future is really what uh, Pat Gelsinger and the team can control. They're very ambitious. Was it four and three? <laughs> five and four, be... baby. By the way, I never get that right, Daniel. Five and four. I knew five it was, nodes it was, it was... in four years. And Pat, I know the Pat node affirmed. Yeah. are one ahead of the year, meaning it's a really that's a really consolidated, compressed timeline. But um, something that if Pat can get done, could get Intel back into the driver's seat. I think what you called out deserves a double click. And that's Intel is sort of alluding to some extent that some of the traditional computing and workloads on these servers are becoming table stakes that in the, into this generation, they can all do it. Meaning the versions built on ARM, the build versions, uh, the versions that are being built by AMD, and of course the versions being built by Intel. And they're really leaning into what accelerated computing is gonna be. Um, future research analyst, Ron Westfall did a really good breakdown on this. And when he was sort of coming back and saying, hey, what was special about this? And it was really just that, it was that this is all about innovation. It's all about accelerated compute. And that's yeah. what Intel is focused on. Um, you know, you look down the list of AMX, DSA, DLB, QAT, AVX. Now, again, nobody knows what that means. You, I love it when you talk like that, by the way. I knew you would like it. Now, the other 93% of listeners have no idea what I'm talking about, but you've got advanced matrix extensions. You've got data streaming accelerators. You've got load balancing. you got... These are all yeah. things that make servers work better. And this is, um, you know, accelerating workloads that are going to really make people's day-to-day -day interactions with software better. And so Intel is kind of saying, look, you know, some of the things that used to be benchmarks and everybody would run numbers next to each other, some of that's becoming table stakes. And let's talk about the things that we're building into our next generation technology that's going to make your systems work better. For Intel, my opinion is it's all about keeping the customers they have. For the last few years, it's been a bit of shedding market share as as, um, as delays have crept in and opened the door. Um, you know, you got to give credit to AMD. You got to give credit to ARM for uh, enabling new companies to enter the server market. But at the same time, Intel has given market share because it hasn't been able to compete. Yeah. So now the question is, with products that are more competitive, with their existing, they still have, you know, and correct me, Pat, I know you keep tabs on this too, around 80%. Of the server market share that's right 78 percent. that's right so it's still a very good number and by any and you know if you and i had 80 percent of the analyst market we'd be doing very well um and sometimes i think people forget about that is that intel is still doing very well my take though is you know the five and four and an incredible discipline in winning and keeping its existing customers for as long as possible are going to be the critical things that take place so you know, it was good, of course, to get the who's who of OEMs and the who's who of cloud providers up on that stage. We all know that all of those companies are hedging more and more, and they're going to continue to hedge. But if Intel gives them products that perform, Intel can tap into its long term and deep relationships and the pretty much CIO offices and the cloud companies all over the planet to win more business and keep more workloads. And let's remember, computing is going to grow. There's going to be more demand and it's not going to change anytime soon. So. Congratulations, Intel. It's one checkbox down, many, many more to go.